Hi, I'm Nikki and I've been a personal trainer for over 20 years now. I'm so pleased that you've decided to join me to help improve your lifestyle, to improve your capabilities of being able to get up and down off the floor or off a chair. Um, this is one of my passions. I think um, growing older, you start to notice that injuries and just lack of exercise can sometimes cause strength imbalances. And it's when it starts to impact your everyday life that it becomes that little bit more concerning and a bit more of a worry. So I really hope that you enjoy these exercises. They're very simple. All you're going to need is a really solid chair and um, a step if you've got one, maybe inside or outside of your house. And if not, then just a book that you can, a really solid book that you can stand on and not slip off. Um, I do use the wall and also um, kitchen counters and door handles. So make sure you've kind of got those nearby. If you do have a resistance band, then that's always a plus and a bit of a bonus. But if you don't, then there's no, no dramas there. I've made sure that there's lots of different variations of the exercises to suit all different fitness levels. So I hope you enjoy this. Do the exercises every day if you can. It doesn't hurt you to do them every day. And I would just do 10 repetitions of every single exercise. They don't have to be done at the same time. So you could be in the kitchen making a cup of tea and do just 10 of one of the exercises. And then later on when you're sitting watching telly, you could do 10 of the others. So make sure it's achievable for you, add it into your daily lifestyle, and I hope that you find that it really helps you. So here are my top five exercises to help you get up off a chair easier or get up off the floor. I'm going to give you quite a few different alternatives as well so that it will be good for all different levels of strength. So the first one I'd like you to do is if you've got a chair or something that you can hold on to, we're just going to do a small little kick back. So we need our glutes, our bum to be nice and strong to help push us up off chairs and off the floor. So this is also very good for creating balance work in the upper opposite leg. So we're just going to squeeze back and in, making sure that as you do this exercise, you're not arching, because then you're not actually working your bum at all, you're just arching your back. So keep your tummy in tight, and it's a small little kick so that you can feel your bum working. All right, so we've got three more, two, and one, lovely. Now an alternative to make that slightly harder if you want, and if you've got a band like this, is that you can place the band around your leg and you can probably keep this on for most of the workout today and you just squeeze back. So that's another alternative to make it just slightly harder. Squeeze and release, squeeze and release. Now I know a lot of people have these sorts of bands. Physios often give these out and you can just wrap this around and tie it in a knot and it will do exactly the same as the one that's on my on my leg at the moment so it just creates that circle that you can squeeze into good so squeeze release squeeze release lovely relax the upper body and try not to hold on for dear life so we are going to try and challenge yourself so that you're getting better with your balance work as well two more and last one Great. Now, a side kick. So we're just going to kick out to the side and back in. So again, you don't need the band for this. You can just do this without. Out and in. Out and in. So we're getting the outside of the thigh working now as well. Feeling your bum working. Now, there is an alternative to this, which is seated. So keep going with this, and I'll show you that alternative in a second. Four. Three two and one. Good, let's do 10 on the other side. So trying to get your balance, try not to rely too heavily on what you're holding on to. Keep your belly button in tight, relax the shoulders down, slight bend in that supporting leg. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, fantastic. So I'll show you that alternative, sitting down on the chair. So I've just got some cushions to make this chair a little bit higher. If we're sitting down, another alternative that you can do is you can actually push against your knees and try and push those legs out. So it's like a, a resist that you're doing. So you get a bit of an arm workout as well. Make sure that when you're leaning forwards, you're not rounding. So you're trying to lean forwards with a nice straight back, 
push into those hands and release. So that's another great one for working your bum and you could do this whilst you're watching telly. So squeeze out and relax, squeeze out and relax. Now the band, if you have one, can make this a little bit more challenging as well and you don't need the hands then. So you're squeezing out and in and I'll show you what this looks like front on. So you're squeezing out and in, wide with the feet, out and in. And with those hands, it's just that resist. So it's like a tug of war, you don't win, just squeezing and relaxing. So that's the other alternative if you don't want to do this standing. Now, the best way of being able to get yourself up and down out of a chair is to practice getting up and down out of a chair. And the best thing for this is squats. So we're going to replicate this movement of being able to get down nice and easily and up without having to push with your hands. Same as when we're on the floor. So if you have a chair that you struggle to get in and out of, I want you to try and get a hardish chair and put a few blocks on here. So maybe some cushions or something just to make it that little bit higher if you need to. And we're just going to squeeze up and then slowly come back down. If you need to use your hands to help you up, that's fine. But I want you to slowly come down, slowly. That's the key to this one. Push yourself up if you need to and then slowly come down. Now that's one option. If you do struggle to get down and up, and this is too advanced already, then one other thing that you can do is hold on to something. So you could hold on to a sideboard in a kitchen and you could squat down and up, down and up. And then you've got the help of that sideboard just helping to pull you back up again. The other option is a door handle. So just pretend I've got a door handle in front of me. You're holding onto that door handle. Obviously make sure the door's closing inwards, not the other way. And you're squatting down and allowing yourself to pull up just slightly with that door handle. So if you don't trust that you're able to do this very well, then grab hold of a door handle or a kitchen countertop. So there's your squats. Then we're going to come into push-ups and you might be thinking, why are we doing push-ups when I need the strength in my leg? Well, if you can imagine if you're down on the floor playing with grandchildren or maybe you're just down here gardening, you sometimes will need to actually push through the upper body to help with your legs. So we're going to practice some push-ups. The easiest starting point for this is to do them against the wall. So I want you to bring your hands nice and wide, just a bit wider than shoulder distance apart. And then you're going to come in towards the wall and push back out again. So in, and out, keeping your body in a straight line. So I don't want you to sink your bum in towards the wall at all. Now, if that's too easy, you can start to walk the hands further down the wall and come more into a diagonal with the feet further out. Or you could do it on a very sturdy chair. This one's not very sturdy, but I'm, I'm not uh, too concerned because I've got a lot of my weight through my feet here, so it's okay. So squeeze and up, or you can see this is gonna move on me. So it would have to be like a really sturdy back of sofa or something, or a really strong table that's not gonna move. Again, you could do it on a kitchen countertop. You could come down and up this way. So keep those going, we'll do four more. Four, three, two, and one. One, good. Now, your next exercise, this is probably one of my favorites to help you um, strengthen up through your quads, which are really important, the front of the thighs to getting up off the floor or a chair. I'd love you to find yourself a step. It could be a step into your house, or if you don't have a step, a really thick textbook that is sturdy and you're not gonna fall off will do as well. So I'll show you the option first of all, just on the textbook, because I'm sure more people have got something like this at home. So I want you just to stand on that book, stand up nice and tall, and then you're going to bend this leg to come down and then back up again. It's a very, very small movement, bend and then back up. Now to advance this and make it harder, you'd obviously go for a slightly bigger step. Just make sure that your hips don't hinge. So you're not reaching up and then back down, reaching up and back down. Your hips stay level and you might want to place your hands just on your hips to make sure that it's your knee that's bending and not your hip that's just coming up and down. So keep that going. We're going to do four more on this side. Four, 
Good. Three. Watch that that knee is going in a nice straight line with the center of your foot. Two and one. So you should feel a bit of a build up here, a bit of a burn where that's working. Now your other option is if you have got a slightly bigger step, you could do it on your step. And if you do need to hold on to something, feel free to do this close to a wall. And we're coming up, hips are level and down. Good. So doing the same thing again, obviously on the other leg, three, we've got 10 of these, four, so hopefully you can see just how achievable these little exercises are. You don't need to be dressed out in workout gear at all. You could be doing this in your everyday clothing. You could just put a few in when you're in the kitchen. You could hold on and do some squats. You could do a few push-ups on a wall somewhere. Every time you come in and out of your house, if you've got a step there, you could do a few of these. And this is just gonna really help to build those muscles that you need to get you up and down more easily. Good, two more. And last one, fabulous. So I hope that's helped. Just think of those five little exercises, your kickbacks, your side kicks, or your squeezes when you're sitting down, can be done at any time. Push-ups, because you need that strength through your upper body as well if you're pushing yourself up. And then your seated squats or holding on to something and squatting down. And then this one is one of my favorites because we really need strength through the front of the thighs as well. And this is a great way of doing it, especially if you've got dodgy knees because it's only the smallest of knee bends, but you'll still find that you feel those quads working nice and strongly. One other note on the squat, a lot of people don't like squats because they hurt the knees too much, especially if the knees start to come forwards over the toes. And that's because a lot of pressure can go through the knees as we drive them forwards. And that's why it can be quite handy to hold onto something so it allows your bum to go back and then your knees don't have to come so far forwards. So if you found you've got knee pains in the past with squatting like that, just try these ones where you're holding on and you're squatting backwards. You'll find there's less pressure through the knees and you should be able to perform them a lot easier. Well, I hope that's helped. Let me know how you've got on. I'd love to have your feedback.